Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, good morning everybody. <coughs> I am Professor Bikas Medi. Uh, today we are going to discuss water coils. Now this word, you can see uh, several endogenous substances and when you discuss it other receptors, you can see that uh, there are a lot of pharmacological action with this compound. Now when you call it water coil, <coughs> what do you understand by water coils? Now, S you see the word autocoid, it is coming from the Greek word. Autos means self and echos means relief or in terms of when you give the drug, it gets relief. Now, as I said, this is an endogenous compound and it is released from following various stimuli and it is produced by variety of cells. What I am going to do is, I uh, will talk about the beef duration of the action and what is its pharmacological action and how it is produced locally. Like for example, that agent may induce or release as a autocoid following a chemical irritant or for example, you can take an example of UV light following a UV light or trauma or suppose there is a bacterial infection or there is an immunological mediated action. Now, if you take an example like autocot, like it is says that self and echoes relief in a form of drug. Now, what are the autocoids? If you classify these autocoids, like there are some are belongs to amines and typical example of amines are histamine. Another typical example is serotonin. Now, another group of drug autocoids are lipids. For example, most commonly used we discuss is prostaglandin, liquitrins, platelet activating factors. Third class is you can discuss about peptides and proteins. Now, when you talk about peptide, we have an example of bradykinin angiotensin, calidin, neuropeptide or different cytokines. Now, you can see that there are a lot of role of cytokines in different disease. There are many drug has been developed as anti-cytokine therapies. So, there are some cytokines which are pro-inflammatory cytokines. You can take example of rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory condition or autoimmune disease. So, people also have done that this anti-cytokine therapy is useful. <coughs> Let us discuss about most commonly release autocoids is histamine. As you know that histamine is synthesis from the process called decarboxylation from histidine and it is presently high concentration in the skin or in the mucous membrane or in the lungs or GIT as an autocoids. Now, when you look at a cellular level, it is mostly remain in the mast cell or you can look at some of the blood cells like basophil. And when there is a immunologically mediate action like C3A and C5 activated, it interact with the membrane receptors following an antigenic exposure through IgGe it is excessive amount of histamine is released. However, there are non mast cell histamine occurs as a neurotransmitter in CNS also. Now, when you look at the receptors, once the histamine is released, it act on different receptors. Now, what are the receptors? One is H1 receptor, as you know about it is 
mediated to the allergic mediated H2 receptors mostly in the stomach. H3 receptors you consider as auto receptors, it is, it is in CNS and as well as H4 and H5 receptor. Now, these receptors are basically G protein couple receptors. So, when you talk about the agent which it is acting to cyclic AMP inhibit histamine receptors, like you can take an example of the how different drug it act through, like you can take an example of adrenaline or salbutamol. So, as I said that histamine, it is synthesis from histidine, mostly in different areas like skin, mucous membrane, lungs and GIT as a autocoid. However, following that any of the allergic mediated actions, the mast cell become activated like you can take an example of mast cell and basophil which acting through complements 3A4 and 3A2. So, with this following the antigenic exposure through IgGe, you get an action. However, this is also acted as a neurotransmitter. As action you get it through H1 receptor mostly in the periphery, H2 receptors in the stomach or rest of the H3 auto receptors are 4 and 5 are in the CNS. Now, once the histamine is released, like for example, if it is in the periphery, it is mediated allergic reaction through H1 receptors. So, basically you get a contraction of smooth muscles except the blood vessels. But in case of it is acting through H2 receptors, it actually help a stimulation of hydrochloric acid from the stomach cells. And H2 also has another action is it causes stimulation of cardiac cells. Now, when you talk about that whether it is acting on the blood vessel or not, because specially these are vasodilator. Moment you can see that if there is a allergy develop, you can see there is a redness, you can see there is a swelling and it is because histamine it causes vasodilatation though. So, it is causes increased vascular permeability and typically you call it type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Now, another term is very much used is triple response. Especially, we also test a person that whether this person is allergic to any drug or not. So, you get a triple response when you inject intradermally. What you get the response is redness, swelling, it is typically wheel and the player reactions. And as you see that it is also expressed H3, H4 and H5 receptors, it has also CNS functions. Now, look at the sum of the agent which used as pharmacological action, typically you call it antihistaminic. So, when you call what antihistaminic, we tell the people that those drug which typically block H1 receptor, but as well as H2 and other receptor also. Now, when you talk about H1 receptor blockers, which is used mostly for allergic mediated actions, we can take an example of drug like diphenyl hydramine, mephentaramine, promethazine, chlorohydramine, acrivastin, citrizine, estimazole tarfenadine, loratidine. There are so many example, but you need to know that some of the drug are not clinically used. For example, here it is mentioned tarfenadine. This tarfenadine is not used because it is causes QT prolongation. It has cardiac ADR. So, this drug has been withdrawn from the market. However, tarfenadine, metabolite, faxophenadine still it is very commonly used. So, when you look at all the drug, some of the drug it has adverse effect on CNS like it causes sleepiness, it alters the reflexes because these some of the drug like chlorophenaramide, this cause blood brain barrier permeability. But rest of the drug you can say that we talk about faxophenadine, 
or you talk about cytrizin, it does not cross the blood brain barrier because it has a less lipid solubility. Now, all this drug is more preferred the reason behind that you can prescribe the drug in day to day activities. So, typically you give the treatment for any treatment for allergic reaction or you can also give this drug to treat the motion sickness. Of course, we try to avoid those drug are first generation those who are in a active participation in a daily activities because it causes sedation. Now, anytime H2 blockers, it is most commonly used otherwise though we had mentioned it is cimetidine, metimamide, renitidine, but commonly used H2 blocker it is renitidine only. Now, why the renitidine? Because though it was initially cimetidine was developed as a H2 blockers, nowadays it is not used because it has potent anti androgenic action. However, this renitidine is a very potent drug which is used for gastritis or peptic ulcers or GI disorders because it reduces the gastric acid secretion. Now, take an example of H3 blockers, though therapeutically you may not get much use like buramamide, imurumide. So, these are drug prefer to be experimentally used in case of neurodegenerative conditions. So, since as I told you that this H3 receptors mostly located in CNS and it is autoreceptors. So, you give the drug specially in case of a neurodegenerative condition. Another example like you take a example of H2 blockers which is also remain in CNS. So, beyond H2, H3, 4, 5 are still in a CNS. So, there are one drug called thioperamide, it is used for urinary intracontinence. So, these are the example that, but most common example you need to remember that those drug used as an anti allergy drug, we divide into first generation and second generation. First generation means it cross blood brain barrier. So, it has a potent side effect called sedation or somnolence or it alter the reflexes. So, we prefer to use those drug like for example, cytrizine, faxophenadine, these are the drug which is not cause this sedation. So, we used to use for treatment of allergic reaction and another example is those drug, some of the drug like I mentioned is terpenadine, it is banned because it causes QT prolongation. However, metabolite of terpenadine, faxophenadine still is very much in clinical use. Now, after histidine, <laughs> one of this compound very commonly used, very commonly discussed is serotonin. Now, serotonin you call it serotonin or 5 hydroxy tryptamine. Now, what is this compound? It is basically a monoamine neurotransmitters and it is synthesis from tryptophan. Now, primarily when you look at the site of serotonin, you get it in GIT, gastrointestinal tract, especially in chromopene cells or enteric neuron. Now, this serotonin is also present in platelet and CNS. And there are a lot of you know CNS function is mediated by serotonin and it has lot of uh, various pharmacological action. Now, when you talk about serotonin, what are the action is that it help in GI motility. It help in once the serotonin release, it is help in platelet aggregation or also it increase the microvascular permeability. Like you have seen in histamine once it release is causes vasodilatation and there is more permeability. So, the fluid come out to the tissue. So, you get typically a flare up or wheels. So, another function is it stimulate nociceptive nerve function. So, in case of brain stimuli, so this is also mediated by 5 HT. Now, other than that, you can see in case of appetite, in case of sleep or any mood disorders or alteration of mood, hallucination, stereotype behaviors, there are so many CNS function it is mediated by 5 HT or serotonin. And we have already mentioned a pain perception and permitting is also mediated by serotonin. So, serotonin has there are lot of you know functions, physiological functions and it can be altered by giving 
pharmacological agent with serotonin mediated one. Now, when you look at the role of serotonin or 5-HT in clinical conditions, typically you can take an example of migraine. There are a lot of drugs has been developed in terms of treatment for mood disorders or in case of anxiety, vomiting and typically one of the condition you can see that there is excessive amount of serotonin is released from GIT that because of malignant tumor of enterochromophim cells and because of this release typically the patient complained of severe pain abdomen and at the same time they also complain of cyst tightness because it causes bronchoconstriction. So, typically you call it carcinoid syndrome. Now, look at how this serotonin act through the different receptors and what are the drug has been developed based on this receptor subtype. If you take an example of receptor 5 hydroxytyptamine 1 A. So, this receptor is normally located in CNS and it causes neural inhibition. Now, we have medicine like buspirone. It is typically used as agonistic action as an angiolytic, Jepiron, Epsilon. So, these are the drug are used in treatment of anxiety. Now, another is as I said that when you talk about 5-HT, one of the example it comes with 5-HT role in migraine. Now, this receptor 5-HT 1D, it is mostly located in blood vessels of meningeal vessels. So, though we do not know the pathophysiology of migraine, whether that meningeal vessels cause a contraction or dilatation, there are different theories, but drug has been developed that agonistic action like sumotriptin. It is acting through 5-HT, 5-HT 1D agonist. Another drug is naratriptin, rizaptriptin. So, these drugs are most preferred drug in terms of migraine. Another in like it has action on platelet aggregation. So, you have a receptor 5-HT2A2C where this receptor is located in CNS blood vessels. Like some of the drug were developed like methyl sarzide, ketanserine, cyproheptidine. Now, but you need to remember that methyl sarzide is not no longer used. The reason behind it causes typically retroperitoneal fibrosis. So, this drug has been banned. But still, there are several conditions cyproheptidine it is used and typically it is used in prophylaxis of migraine, peripheral vasodilators and this cyproheptidine is also used as a off-label use in pediatrics also. Now, another example of 5-HT is as you know that it is mostly located in CNS, enteric neuron. Now, we have so many drug has been developed as antagonistic is ondensetron. Typically, everybody knows that ondensetron is most widely used in case of the vomiting which is not controlled by metrochlorpropamide, especially when you give the patient with cancer chemotherapy, dolocetron, topicetron. So, these are typically a anti emetics very strong anti emetic which is been preferred in cancer chemotherapy induced vomiting. Now, another example 5-HT4, it is mostly localized in intestine. So, those patient you call it irritable bowel syndrome. One of the drug has been used is tagaserot which is used in irritable bowel syndrome. So, if you can summarize that 5-HT like there are different receptors and different drug has been used as a agonistic or as a antagonistic. So, typically if you see 5-HT 1A is a CNS neural inhibition. So, you have an agonistic effect like buspiron, jepiron, ispiron and use for as an angiolytic purpose, patients suffering from anxiety. Now, 5-HT1D we use as agonistic like commonly used is sumotriptin, we use treatment of migraine. Similarly, we have antagonistic drug also, we use for prophylaxis of migraine, we typically use ondensetron, delcetron, topicetron as an anti-emetic, especially cancer chemotherapy induced emesis 
and also irritable bowel syndrome. Now, there are another group of drug we call it selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And these drugs are used most commonly in chronic anxiety, depression or bulimia in psychiatric condition. So, typically you can take an example of the drug is like fluvoxamide, citalopram, fluoxetine, paroxetis, sartolin. So, these are the drug is most commonly used and these are typically it is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So, this commonly used in as I said earlier chronic anxiety, depression, bulimia. So, these are also a group of drug is in the use. Now, another autocoid which we need to discuss is eicosanide. Eicosanide means there are 20 carbon atom is combined. Now, what is eicosanide? One is prostanoid that include prostaglandin, thromboxane. If you look back and see in 1970s and 80s, there are a lot of studies people used to work on prostaglandin. And following that research, we have several NSIDs have been developed. Along with this prostaglandin and thromboxane, we have also typically leukotriene that number have been drug has been developed in case of bronchial asthma or another compound we call it lipoxin. So, typically eicosanide it is a 20 carbon atom that include prostanoid means the prostaglandin and thromboxin and the liquidrin and lipoxin. Let us see what is this compound is. Now, look at the pathway. It is an inflammatory stimulus. It is converted from phospholipid to prostaglandin A2. Now, if you remember the araconic acid like from arachidonic acid through 5 lipooxygenase ultimately it from the liquid train and from 15 lipooxygenase it from lipoxin and from this cox cyclooxygenase it from through endoperoxide prostaglandin and thromboxane A2. So, if you see the enzyme it is mediated through arachidonic acid pathway one is lipooxygenase which from leukotriene another enzyme is 15 lipooxygenase which form lipoxin and as you know that cyclooxygenase of course, we will discuss cyclooxygenase 1, 2 and 3 role it form prostaglandin and thromboxin. Now, as I said when you look at the history of working people working on prostaglandin there are number of NSID you call it non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug because if you say steroidal typically you find a ring of cyclopentoparhydrophenantin. Now, one of the very old drug has been developed based on this prostaglandin synthesis inhibitor you can remember is aspirin acetylsalicylic acid. This drug has been developed that it act as anti-inflammatory because it inhibit prostaglandin. Now, another commonly used drug we use is acetaminophen or paracetamol used as antipyretic or different dose it act as antipyretic, anti-inflammatory or analgesic. Another very old drug is dipyrone. Now, when you look at modern NSIDs, you can take an example of diclofenac sodium, acyclofenac, naproxen, mephenomic acid ibuprofen, indomethacin. So, there are huge number of lists of modern NSIDs and these NSIDs some are acting through that only COX-2 inhibitors because the major problem with NSID was that it causes gastritis and since it is inhibiting the prostaglandin you can pharmacologically think that if you inhibit prostaglandin what are the problem it can cause because prostaglandin is a vasodilator. So, if you inhibit vasodilatation there is chances of gastritis, there could be similar action like hepatotoxicity or there is a decreased blood flow to the kidney. So, it causes kidney toxicity. So, you can say gastritis, hepatotoxicity, renal toxicity. So, these are you can typically see the class effect of NSID. 
Now, as I said that you need to understand that cyclooxygenase because based on that there are several drug has been developed. <coughs> so, if you see COX it has 3 isoform, one is COX 1 we call it constitutive and it act in a physiological condition and COX 2 is inducible, it is induced when there is an inflammatory response take place and COX 3 typically you get it found in a brain. So, drug we give an example of aspirin, it is typically inhibit the COX 1, but at the same times you can say that rofecoxib, silicoxib, ituricoxib, valdicoxib, there are so many COX 2 inhibitors have been developed and these are COX 2 inhibitors because why they develop COX 2 inhibitors in order to avoid the gastritis, but later on it was found that it causes cardiovascular problem. So, some of the drug has been withdrawn from the market. Now, we have typical NSIDs like meloxicam, I have given an example of diclofenac sodium, acyclofenac, there are so many. One of the example like pneumocyli is a very important analgesic as well as antipyretic ox. Now, this pneumocylite is also developed because it has a potent action on COX 2 inhibitor. So, it has less chances of developing ulcer in the GIT. So, it is these are also pro thrombotic or cardiovascular risks, especially COX 2 inhibitors. Now, same thing if you put it in a figures, NSIDs there are some non selective which act on COX 1 and COX 2 both inhibitors. There are typically COX 2 inhibitors which are called COXIP like rofecoxib, silicoxib, ituricoxib, valdicoxib, pericoxib, there are so many COXIP example and there are selective COX 3 inhibitors. Now, this COX 3 enzyme is only in a brain. So, this COX 3 inhibitors it act as an antipyretic, but it can also act as a analgesic, but other COX 1 and COX 2 it can act as a antipyretic analgesic or also use as anti inflammatory agent. Now, look at the prostanoid, we when you call it prostanoid we include both prostaglandin and thromboxin. Now, typically if you see the location of prostaglandin like in vascular endothelium what is its action? It causes vasodilatation or it inhibit the prostaglandin aggregation. Now, you take an example of thromboxin, it is also remained in vascular endothelium, but typically once thromboxin A2 is released, it causes vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation. Now, we have an example of prostaglandin E1, drug acting through prostaglandin E1 like alloprostodol, misoprostol, gamoprostol, it is mostly remain in blood vessel and myocardium, but typically also these are the drug is used in erectile dysfunction or you can take a example of this drug can be used in ductus arteriosus in order to keep the potency or it is also used in gynecological condition like softening and dilatation of the cervix, this prostaglandin inhibitors. Now, another prostaglandin E2 are dinoprostol. Now, this prostaglandin E2 it is remain in GI smooth muscles and tracheobronchial tree or myometrium. So, it is action is it causes contraction of pregnant uterus. Second thing is it is also used in labor and termination of pregnancy and it can use also in GIT conditions and because it causes contraction of GI smooth muscles. Now, another example if you see prostaglandin F2 alpha and if you remember the drug acting through F2 alpha it is dinopros and latanopros. Now, these are mostly localized in bronchi, tracheobronchial tree or myometrium or it is also used in ophthalmological condition. <laughs> so, typically you can use in case of respiratory tract bronchi or myometrium or in case of ophthalmological condition. 
So, you can remember that what are these prostanoid, prostaglandin and thromboxane, what is its physiological role, where it is you know uh, situated like prostaglandin thromboxane, like as I said it is vascular endothelium. Like if you say the release of prostaglandin is causes vasodilatation, it causes inhibition of platelet aggregation. Similarly, when you talk about thromboxin A2, it remain in vascular endothelium, but you get a typical example of vasoconstriction, platelet aggregation. So, when you talk about action of prostaglandin and thromboxin, it is opposite action. Now, when you look at the different prostaglandin receptors E1, E2 and F2 alpha, you can think of where it is resided, situated and what is its physiological function and that is how it is used in different pathological condition as a treatment with different agent. And another typically we commonly use is platelet activating factors. Prostaglandin A2, it release platelet activating factors. Typically when there is an inflammation, you find that. Now what it does cause? It causes vasodilatation. So when you find an inflammation, you can say vasodilatation. There is increased vascular permeability. There is activation of platelet activation. So typically this platelet activating factors also does all this physiological and pathological function. Another group of autocoid is peptide and protein. Now as you see peptide, what it does? Peptide you can divide into vasoconstrictor peptide or you can say vasodilator or you can also make it neuropeptide. Now typically if you say vasoconstrictor peptide, you can take an example of angiotensin and endothelin. Now when you take out that vasoconstrictor like we take an example of adrenaline or isoprenaline, but endothelin is a very, very potent vasoconstrictor compared to adrenal. And you have a another vasoconstrictor is angiotensin. Now what are the vasodilators? You can take that atrial nitroatric peptide or kinins, these are vasodilator or calcium gene related peptide. But we have also another th uh, number 3 is neuropeptide. Neuropeptide you can take an example of cholecystokinin. So peptide you can divide as a vasoconstrictor, take an example of angiotensin or endothelin or vasodilator, take an example of atrial nitroatric peptide which also causes diuresis or neuropeptide like cholecystokinin. Now typically nowadays any literature you see, you can see that role of cytokine. In every disease pathology you can see role of cytokines. There are different cytokines are there which are inflammatory cytokine, but there are number of example of cytokine which also as an anti-inflammatory cytokine. Now what are these cytokine? These basically cytokines are soluble protein or you can call it glycoprotein. And it has a specific cellular receptors and mostly it is acting through inflammatory and immune response. So you can say the cytokine act together on endothelium or leukocyte, mastocyte, fibroblast, stem cells, fibro, uh, you know osteoblast. So it has control for polymerization differentiation and receptor mechanism. Now take an example of different cytokine, like if you say example cyt uh, interleukin 1, what is its role? Its role in pathogenesis, you can take as an example of rheumatoid arthritis. So typically when there is an inflammation in patients suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, we give anti-cytokine treatment like TNF alpha inhibitors or interleukin 1 inhibitor, you can also call designer molecule. So what it does like we have another drug called glucocorticoid or glucosamine synthesis inhibitor of L interleukin 1. So you can take an example of interleukin 2, what it does normal function is it activate cytotoxic T cell or nuclear natural killer cells used in IV or renal carcinoma, but it has lot of side effects also. All these designer molecules or anti-cytokine therapy has side effect. Now another example interleukin 11 it stimulates you know thrombocytopenesis. 
Now interleukin 18 upregulate interferon production or nesoreculate activity. So you can take an example of different you know interleukins like interleukin 23, it activate natural killer cells, T cell macrophage, so it ha help in immunity. Like interferon alpha 2b, we have a typical treatment management for hepatitis B and C or you can take the example of lymphomas and melanomas. Interleukin, uh, you know, interferon beta we use for multiple sclerosis or interferon gamma it help in immune activation. So, there are lot of therapeutic areas we use a cytokine or anti-cytokine treatment for therapeutic role. So, if you see this autokite start from histamine, you understand the role of histamine and based on that we have different histaminic receptors like H1 receptors, H2 receptors and also histamine receptors present in CNS. So, typically we have the therapy we use histamine is anti-allergic treatment. Then we have a leukotriene, we have 5 tryptamine or prostaglandin and also we have a peptides, prostanoid. So, there are different roles and there are different drug has been developed. So, any question and answer I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much.